Hey y'all, hey, it's your girl LMJ coming to you with today's sip spiritual inspirational pause. And this morning, guess what we're gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about forgiveness Woo! and how we step into that process. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So I'm not going to be before you alone because again, it is a sip, but I think this is probably one of the most um, significant parts of um, our story, right? Of forgiveness, of receiving forgiveness and giving forgiveness. So I want to start today with Matthew 18, 21 and 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked the Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times, <laughs> like not seven times, 70 times, 70. So here's what I think we need to note that this is what Jesus is doing. He's already letting us know forgiveness is a process. Like forgiveness is a process. That's what he's already letting us know, that forgiveness is a process. And in everything where I was studying out forgiveness, he never talks about us and how we make others forget, how we how we um, try to force others um, to, um, he never talks to us about, um, us getting others to forgive us or us, right? Um, he talks to us in relation of us forgiving others always. He never really talks to us about the other person. So I want to give you some quick steps to forgiveness. I need you to, I need you to understand that this is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. I think that's why Jesus was like, look, 70 times seven, you're going to have to do this. It is a process. Put that in the comments. It's a process. So I don't, I don't think he was caught up in the number as much as you understand that forgiveness will be a process. So forgiveness occurs when you choose to let go of resentment, of revenge, even the person's wrongdoings and actions, even though the person's wrongdoings and actions don't deserve it, that even if they don't deserve it, you choose to let go of it anyway. You give a gift of mercy. And for those of us that are believers, this is so important because the word also tells us forgive so you can be forgiven, right? So you give a gift of mercy. You let them go. You stop holding them um, prison, imprisoning them to their wrongdoings, right? So what happens here is we are releasing them from all charges against them. Woo! Let me say that again. We are releasing them from all charges against them. Because the one thing that I do know is when we walk in unforgiveness, we're not imprisoning the other person. We're imprisoning ourselves. So I give you seven steps to forgiveness. Seven steps. Seven steps to forgiveness. And these are not my original thoughts. Um, I read this in an article, but I thought it was so power. Seven steps to forgiveness. One, you got to acknowledge the hurt. You cannot avoid this. <laughs> you cannot avoid this. It is not for man or woman. You are not a strong person because you don't acknowledge the hurt. You have to acknowledge that what this person did hurt you. You cannot sweep it under the rug you got to know okay i gotta acknowledge this this is a process i gotta acknowledge that it hurts and then i gotta a ask myself also how long did it happen what was what was the context of how it happened what went on then two you gotta consider the hurt Ooh, come on now and what i mean by consider is before i make the next decision to forgive like what before i make the next decision decision to forgive I got to consider the hurt. I got to consider what really happened. I got to consider what really happened. Because when I make the decision that I'm going to forgive this person, I need to realize and recognize and deal with the feelings that hurt. I need to deal with the negative feelings. I need to deal with how the pain has changed me. 
I need to know whether or not uh, what happened was detrimental, how it was detrimental. I got to consider, I got to go through the process of these things. It's not just a blanket statement to forgive. It's a process, right? That's why sometimes when we forgive somebody, um, then it comes, the hurt comes back up or we see the person again we're overwhelmed it's because a lot of times we don't walk through the process we don't acknowledge the hurt we try to stuff it we try to pretend like it wasn't at that magnitude we don't really consider what happened right we're not really um considering all that went on and dealing what all with what on and then third part of the step we got to accept that we cannot change the past we got to accept that we cannot change the past right no matter how painful this is, no matter how painful it was, I have to accept the fact that I cannot change the past and I have to accept the fact that being unforgiving <laughs> is not going to change what happened to the person, nor is it going to redeem it. So this puts me in a position or a place of which I make the decision of whether or not the fourth step, I'm going to determine whether I'm not going to forgive or not. Now, for those of us that are believers, we are, this is supposed to be our truth, <laughs> but can I be real? You have to make a determination. I'm going to forgive this person because what happens is every time you see this person, every time something reminds you of the event that occurs, the pain is going to come up. The, the memories are going to come up. And so I have to decide in my head, I'm going to forgive this person. So here is something that I use often, right? If there is a person that I'm working on to forgive, then every time that person comes up, every time that person name, name, names, name comes up, then I, whoever the person's name is, is I'm going to use Judah just for an example. Lord, I forgive Judah. Lord, I forgive Judah. Every time the person comes up, Lord, I forgive Judah. Again, because it's a process. It's the, the memories are real. The pain is real. It's not I'm just letting you go. It's not. Because if somebody does something that hurts you or damages you, that pain is going to be really real. The next part is probably one of the most difficult parts of the steps. I'm going to repair the relationship. I didn't say restore. I didn't say reconcile. But I said I'm going to repair the relationship. And in reconciliation and repairing the relationship, and this may take more time. This may take more time. This may take time before the relationship returns to normal. I'm going to use kind words. I'm going to use simple gestures. And I may even use gifts. And the word says do good to those that misfightfully use you. Come on now. Um, I'm going to learn six step. I'm going to learn what forgiveness means to me. I need to understand what forgiveness means to me because we we have ideas of what we feel like forgiveness and then the final step is i'm actually going to forgive i'm gonna let go and i'm gonna move on i hope this sip blesses you today let me pray for us father god i thank you for your word today that jesus reminds us that forgiveness is a process and it's not always easy so father god first of all we receive forgiveness for ourselves we ask that you forgive us and then, Lord God, we forgive and release those that have wronged. Help us to navigate through the steps and the process. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a process. It's not a whoop, whoop, whoop. It happens overnight. It is a working process. But every time that person comes up, just simply remind yourself and say again and again, say, you know what? I forgive so-and-so. And every time the pain comes up again, say it again. I forgive so-and-so and just keep working through the process. And guess what? Eventually, eventually, you're going to feel so much better and you're going to be able to release. I love y'all. If you want to know more about the ministry, log on to the website, lmjministries.org.